Good day. Thank you for joining me for another episode of Dwarf Fortress Play. Although in this case, it's my intention is to make this more of a tutorial than a play session. I thought it might be helpful to uh, go through the uh, site selection and embarkation process in the game, which are the first things you need to do when you're starting a new a new game. Now I made a I made a tutorial the other day about uh, running the tutorial, which if you're going to do that, that, that's actually a good way to get started with a first site and a reasonable set of dwarves and things. Um, and in this case, I just generated a new world, which I am examining really for the first time. Looks well connected. There is one big island up here, I guess, with a volcano. What is the volcano called? The volcano is named the Earthen Torches. Oh, that's a good volcano name. Seems like that would be a tough location. Anyway, so once you've generated the world, there is a lot of inform. Well, there's some information here. So first of all, you might want to consider choosing your civilization. There are, in this case, five dwarven civilizations that have been uh, developed throughout the world gen process. We can have a look at them, where they're located. This one's way down south. This one's central, west. <clears throat> this one, the Crazy Girder and the release name are actually quite close to each other. The Crazy Girder looks to be quite well developed here based on the number of uh, sites they have. You can actually see over here, it talks about what the population is of each one and how many sites they have. Ooh, release name, 33 sites, 3,000 population. These are some big civilizations, or at least they seem to me to be quite big. Crazy Girder is actually maybe the smallest one. Now the game defaulted to this one, and I don't know why that is, but looking over, oh, they're right next to each other. So either one of these, Unsurprisingly, they're all sort of located in and around or near mountains, very much so, which is a dwarvy way to get going. Now, you don't have to choose a site that's near any of these. You can choose anywhere in the world, really. Some embarkation locations will be much harder than others, um, so we'll talk about that just a little bit. Anyway, I think, I think maybe we'll just stick with this one. Close that menu with the right click. Um, you can also reclaim or unretire things that have been, that are ruined. Uh, you can do this with your own failed fortresses actually as well. I see there's some here. <laughs> what happened to this one? In the year one, the gate of mortals of the crazy girder founded Hush, Hush Anvil. In the summer of 12, the rock Bokbon Rapid Dove, the Robust Seas, that's quite the name, routed the Gate of Mortals of the Crazy Girder and destroyed Hush Anvil. So while this is kind of interesting to explore, it's not uh, something that we're going to pursue any further here. So finally, there's the Find Embark Location option, which is what I would probably recommend to, to quickly find, relatively quickly, relatively quickly find some locations to embark. So there's lots of criteria. Pardon me. There are lots of criteria and parameters over here that you can choose. The default size of an embarkation site is 4x4 four four, and that seems reasonable to me. You can customize things like savagery that it's that the game will search. Once you once you choose all of these criteria or none of them except what's default, the game will search. So by you can, if you wanted to play, say, in a calm location, you can choose these things. I don't typically, unless I'm looking maybe for a challenge, actually, in, in which case I would probably turn those things up. I typically leave them at defaults, but you can choose lots of things to have the game search for sites that fit you. Uh, rain, 
yeah, it's nice to have a bit of rain. Drainage, flux stone. Flux stone actually is something that I would typically turn on. I would recommend that for a beginner that's used in making uh, iron. Aquifers, you're going to want to turn those off. Um, aquifers are ch a bit challenging to deal with, and uh, we won't we won't go down that road here. I do like a river, though, for flowing water source and um, soil is I'm not sure what the symbol is meant to be but uh, deep some little none no soil is is obviously more challenging I think I'll leave that one alone clay sand iron iron we're gonna say yes gold silver copper the rest of it is of some interest but the, the world generation oh this is all new to me I didn't know you could choose all of these I don't think this these metals were an option in the past or yeah metals so we'll start this start the search and what the game does is it goes through and uh, whoops oh my goodness did I just start the did I stop the search I might have why is this what on earth did I bollocks this up I think I stopped the search. That was not in, oh no, still running, pardon me. I'm not sure why we're in zoomed in mode here. I. How do you get out, there we go. Oh my Lord. Okay, so as you can see, I'm still struggling with the UI a little bit on this version. Um, UI aside, I do have, <laughs> trust me, I have lots of experience. I do actually have lots of experience playing this game uh, in classic mode. I've been playing it for probably, probably a couple of years before it went 3D. I'm not sure, meaning it had depth. I'm not, I'm not sure how long ago that was, more than a decade for sure. So as the game searches, it, it brings up, it basically classifies things. Yellow, I think, basically means not really matching what you're looking for, or not at all, potentially. And green means it has the characteristics you're you're looking for somewhere in that in that world square. So it it scans through all of the um, well, all of the world that it's generated, looking for those criteria. And we're getting close to being done here. So the searcher should be coming down this way pretty quick. And there we go. <clears throat> so at the, in the end, only the green ones, the green uh, world, world uh, areas show up. So you zoom into an area with a left click and you can see here so red what is red yes so it 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 doesn't match it for some reason uh, in this case i think it's probably aquifer related here this green box has sites that match the criteria all of these green boxes have sites that match the criteria i didn't specify trees Trees are, in fact, nice to have. Uh, to zoom out, right-click. You can move around with the keys, WASD, or drag it around with the middle mouse button, which is what I'm doing now. I actually am more in the habit of uh, using the keys, but for ease of understanding what I'm doing, I'm trying to use the mouse the whole time here. So this one might be interesting, heavily forested. Clay, sand, very deep soil, iron, gold. Well, not in the mountains. And um, nowhere near... Well, I shouldn't say that. Oh, wait a minute. We might actually be separated from... Oh, no, they can go around the long way. I was going to say we might be separated from our civilization's caravans by a... I don't know 
if they can get across there or not. That's interesting. So seashore sites are also quite interesting to play. Um, it would be cool to embark in the sea, but it's not an option <laughs> for, for what might be obvious reasons. All right, so anyway, I don't know if the caravans can cross that gap or not. I would be inclined to say not. Although I'm not sure about that. If it's just a river, they might be able to. <clears throat> Is it a river? Does it tell us? It doesn't tell us. This little narrow gap here and this little narrow gap here, maybe this one might be traversable. I don't really know. Anyway, however, it is connected by land in quite a roundabout fashion to the home civilization. Uh, let's see here. Let's take a look at some of these ones. All right. These are maybe even more interesting. Oh, right, let's have a look at the soil is an issue here. Some soil, little soil, little soil. Okay. That's not my preferred state of affairs. Although <clears throat> it's doable. I think for a first fortress, you probably want some soil. I'm going to come back up in this area. They said, you know what? I kind of like this one. So, um, you know, choose embark. You get a chance to lay down your grid. You don't have to. You can put it anywhere you want, obviously. Uh, probably wanting to stay away from aquifers. You can see on the box on the right over here some information about where your cursor is hovering. So heavily forested with a bit of a river. Clay and sand. It's a lot of river right there. That's a weensy little bit of river. I'm just thinking about what might be interesting. Maybe right there. Okay, so now you have two, two main options here. Well, there's a number of things you can choose. Enemies, off, normal, hard. Economy, normal or hard. Custom settings, where you can go and tune all kinds of parameters to make your game what you might want it to be, especially if you've been playing for a while. So you can get some, in, some idea of what might go on here. Civilizations can attack. Yes or no. Mega beasts, were beasts. Curious wilderness creatures can, can come to cause trouble. That actually has been my biggest problem in forts in the new version. Um, a lot of parameters that give you some idea what's going on under the hood. Probably I would leave these at defaults. There's lots you can tune, though, if you're interested. So let's close that. Normally, I just select play now because the skills that it provides equipment and animals are, are reasonable to get started you can also prepare carefully in which you basically get to customize your dwarves completely as well as the items that you're bringing and the animals that you're bringing so you get a, a number of points to spend so i don't normally do this uh let's have a look here Skills 10, view. Oh, view the dwarf, right? So the dwarves are generated with some basic personalities. I don't know that you can replace those dwarves. I don't think so. I don't think so. So basically, you get to choose um, a bunch of skills. And you, ch you can choose 10. So we're going to select a mining level and get them to be well that, if we take if we, if we a proficient miner actually would be a good starting point uh labor wise <laughs> not not mechanic not oh i see uh, i wasn't even reading the other ones they start they all start out as not so the miner is probably going to be mostly a miner 
Uh, if you want to choose some secondary skills, you'll want to pick things that aren't going to interfere with the main job of mining. So maybe some more obscure things, or, 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 or maybe some combat, actually. Let's make the miner also a hammer dwarf. And perhaps some social skills. Look at all these things. There's a bunch of new stuff here. Very interesting. All right, I shouldn't get lost in this too much. The other thing you probably want is some backup skill uh, in case you need it. Um, so I'm going to pick some basic metal type skills for the miner. Rovod. Uh, you also want a woodcutter. Probably the skill level there is not that important. The woodcutter maybe could be a, a carpenter. We might as well crank that right up. So they're, they're more of a carpenter than a woodcutter. Um, and other labors. So the crucial skills, you can also develop these in your in your dwarves by setting them to the tasks. And you get immigrants. Typically you get some immigrants unless your site is just ridiculously dangerous. You would typically get some immigrants. So I think we're going to make, oh, we might as well make this carpenter, woodcutter, and axe dwarf, at least a novice level. And maybe a couple of, oh, not a liar. A couple of social skills, judge of intent. Okay, that's it for our carpenter. Carpenter slash woodcutter. This peasant here, what else do we need? Um, we need a leader. Uh, although, I don't know if you can choose that here or not. Group symbol, group name, fortress name. Okay, lots of things. One thing at a time. So, uh, miner, woodcutter, carpenter, this peasant. What else do we want to have in the early days? Um, you want a fisher dwarf. Well, we know there's going to be a stream there, so hopefully there's fish in the stream or river. In terms of labor, the fisher dwarf could perhaps be a fish dissector as well. Oh, wait, fish, not a fish dissector, fish cleaner. Um, what else should they be? Maybe we'll give them some more obscure skills. Combat-wise, might leave that out. Uh, do, 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 do. The medical skills are actually probably, well, again, you can develop those. Not record keeper, not com Okay, we're going to be a, con this is going to be a, a fun, happy Fisher Dwarf. Okay. What else do we need? Peasant, Fisher Dwarf. Let's go back to the crucial skills here. Miner, Woodcutter, Carpenter. Oh, Mason. You want a Mason, might as well crank it up to proficient. Um, Maybe our mason can be a mechanic as well, which is another skill you want to have some of. Probably not important how, actually it's not important how proficient they are. Uh, do, 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 do. The mason should probably be, smash things with a mace, I would suggest. We'll make them a negotiator and a persuader and, oh, they're, they're a consoler. All right, back to the picking of the skills. Weaponsmith, all of these things are not crucial. Crucial, we have the top four. 
let's see here. I'm going to pick some low level things here. What did I just pick? Armor Smith. Oh, wait a minute. One of my other dwarves was uh, some of these things. Yes, the, the miner. Let's go back here. Not an armor smith. We'll make this one a wood burner, a butcher. Oh, let me think about this here. A farmer. We definitely want a brewer. Maybe a competent brewer. And what other skills? We need a... Th You've got farming type skills. We're going to make this person thresher and a miller. We're going to want to give at least one dwarf some clothing skills. Two skill picks left. Well, I think perhaps other farming related activities. Um, where are we here? Maybe a tanner and a leather worker. So Latast is a brewer. We'll want a cook. Is that a key skill? It's not a key skill. Oh, no, it is a key skill. Make them an adequate cook. Make them a weaver and a clothier. Maybe, maybe not. Let me think about that. You can always assign tasks to the dwarves once you get going. And um, I'm just thinking about these martial skills here now. Maybe we'll turn our last dwarf into more of a... Maybe our cook can be some of these medical things. And I will turn our last peasant here into more of a fighter. Um, oh, actually, we'll also give them some stone carver engraver. Oh, we need some crafting skill too. Hmm. Maybe we'll not worry about the military stuff so much. So this one will be more focused on uh, crafts. Can we choose bone, stone, wood, metal, laborer? Right, well this is exciting, me thinking thinking hard about what else we might want in the fortress. We could maybe use some herbalists. Oh, I didn't make anybody planters. <laughs> oh boy. This is where the default set is kind of nice because the skills, you don't have to think hard about the skills. I really don't do this very often, but I wanted to go through the process to basically show what it's like here. Uh, where is the agricultural, like, plant, planting? Did I miss that? Or future brewer, gem setter. Not there. Labor, miller, thresher, we have some of that. Cook, weaver, clothier, etc. Trapper, ambusher. Milker, this is all the farming stuff. Or farm-related things, but nothing about plant... Gathering, combat, other. Yeah, we've completely, more or less completely ignored combat. Swimmer, medical, social. Interesting. So the far, oh, wait a minute here. Teacher, tactician, leader. Oh, maybe we should make our stone crafter a leader. <laughs> I'm not seeing anything to do with, really to do with planting other than the, planting and harvesting other than the one thing. I think maybe they all do that. Okay, there we go. For better or for worse, that's the skill set. So let's take some cloth. We need plump helmet spawn. We want some of these
Are we just picking the number of spawn? Okay, I see. So are we already starting with each of these? I can't. It looks to me, I'm confused. I'm confused by this interface. Um, let's see here. Do you need to clothe your dwarves? <laughs> let's have a look here. <laughs> uh, no, they have clothes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> been a long time so looks to me like we are you're starting with five of each of these so I just I basically just cranked up the plump helmet spawn a little bit uh, we do want an and oh I'm confused your items so this is what we oh this is what we already have I guess okay one anvil two battle axes two copper picks wine ale 60 total okay Honey, badger, tripe. Okay. Cave fish, plump helmets. Oh, we also have plump helmets. Yeah, that's good. Pigtail bags, thread. Ropes, good. Quivers, buckets, splints, crutches, wheelbarrow. Stepladder. All right, that looks reasonable. Uh, now, what other things might we want? Uh, let's see here. We could take a steel anvil right off the bat. I wonder. Maybe we do that. We take a steel one instead of an iron one. Steels are, uh, they are, what are they? Better? <laughs> There's more reason beyond that. I'm not really going to go too deeply into it. Training weapons, ammo. We'll take some, uh, oh, really? Iron bolts? Everything but steel bolts. Bronze is cheap. Copper is cheap. Let's take... Oh, just two. Oh, I see. Okay, we'll just take copper bolts. Uh, we also would want a crossbow then. Which we do not have, so let's get a crossbow. We Oh, there we go. Iron, copper, bronze, bismuth, bronze. I'll tell you what. Bronze is reasonable. Training weapons, ammo, trap components. Mm, maybe not at this point. We probably want a couple of cages, digging implements. We could upgrade our picks a little bit. Copper, steel, bismuth, bronze, bodywear. Shields, maybe we'll throw in... couple of bronze shields throw in oh toys are expensive oh okay no copper toys what do kids know not much i think cheap toys are perfectly fine let's uh take some stone toys they're dwarves after all and wow you can make them out of every single type of stone okay well red is a nice color i feel like dwarves would like it because it looks like blood there's no kids um but there will be Female, fem female, male, 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 female, female, female. Oh, how about am I talking about male, male, female? Two females, four males. Okay, I don't think we can change that. All right, anyway, we're running out of points rapidly here. Cheeses, powders, extracts, meat, fish, plants. Plants? Oh, plump helmets, garden vegetables. Hmm. I don't know what's going to be suitable for this climate, so maybe we'll just leave that alone. Cages, yes, they're all the same cost? Really? Two cages, ropes, we got a little bit of everything. Do we have any just empty barrels? No. We will be able to make those though, miscellaneous. Splints, crutches, eggs, bags. Oh, pets. Oh, no, we can still choose animals. Never mind. Tools. Lots of tools. I think we're going to leave that alone as well. We should be able to make our own tools or trade for them. <clears throat> Gems, no seeds. 
look those up, I'm not sure. Training weapons. Digging body wear. Oh, you know what? Maybe we should take just a little bit of armor. Cheap armor. Uh oh. I'm out of points. All right. And what else can we afford here? Maybe a little more food or drink. Can we afford any drink? Oh, we can. Uh, do we have anything worth an odd number of points? That seems. Oh, yeah. One. One, one, one. Venom, milk. How can you take milk without a barrel? Or a bucket. Not sure how that works. Um, powders, gypsum plaster. You know what? Let's grab one unit of that for the hospital. And some more drinks. We'll take some. Uh, everybody likes rum. All right, on to the animals. So we want some breeding pairs of things. I think we'll take a. Uh, Ooh, hunting dog or dog? Uh, oh, I have no points left. Oh, my goodness. I did not realize that we were taking taking away from one category. Well, what can we do without? We don't need cages, really. Oop. Bags are kind of expensive, but I think we want them. All right, here's me not understanding. Uh, crutches, ropes, what did I choose that might be plaster but that's cheap the shields okay that'll give us some points for animals all right so a uh, female dog hunting dog war dog and a male hunting dog okay what are cats worth 11 points female cat male cat i'd really like to be able to get a couple of birds What are birds? Oh, I can get a couple of birds. Nice. Let's see here. Uh, hens, ducks, geese, llamas. Those aren't birds. Peacocks, peahens, rabbits, turkeys. I'm thinking maybe goose. Goose, gooses. A gander and a goose. And the big animals are expensive, which probably we don't need in the early days anyway. Sheep are less expensive. Sheep are kind of nice to have. Okay, four points remaining. So that means we're going to take some ale. Okay, all done. Fortress name, Bashkog Parch Boot. Well, that is something. I think we're done with that. Our group name is the Ace Fountains. Ooh, uh, Alexaphon. Alexaphon. Done. Who would not like that? Oh, we don't have any symbol. Creature? <laughs> Every creature under the sun. Love it. Um, man, Bride of the Night. Oh my gosh, there's things I wasn't even aware of in here. Phantom Spider. Really? Seriously? Now I'm scared. I don't think I want to play this game anymore. Our historical figure is going to be uh, somebody just out of the middle of this list. Ormal Metal Grasp. And uh, our plant is going to be, what do we love? We love barley. And our favorite tree in the world is... Something cool. So cool. Mahogany. Our shape is going to be a gizzard stone. <laughs> Love it. Okay. Tetrahedral tetrahedron. Who wouldn't like that? Our object is obviously it has to be something really interesting like a jagged. Jagged is nice. 
Yelififidelger. I don't know what that is. An instrument, maybe. Oh yes, a percussion instrument. Oh, it, it describes it. Very nice. Jug. Is that, is that our is that our object? A jug. It's a casting. Percussion instrument. Lots of instruments here. Cool, cool, cool. What is this? Percussion. Every wow, so many instruments. I don't know if I want an instrument though. Oh, Morning Star. Yes, little military. Our artifact is going to be. I don't know what. Uh, reflections on grains of sand, because that, my friends, is what we reflect on. And our action or relationship, reflecting on being mutilated. Oh, I see, it's the symbol. Okay. So the giant spider is striking a triumphant pose, of course. And that's it. We're done. Whoop. Are we done? Yeah, we're done. Yes, we are done. That is the coolest group symbol in the history. Uh, we're gonna choose. We're gonna name this profile coolest ever. We're gonna save it, and then we're going to embark. I am, oh, we have one unpicked skill. Do we now? Go back. Who do we have a skill from? Oh, this guy. How could we do that? Uh, he's gonna be a persuader because that's how he rolls. Save profile, save, overwrite, embark. Here we go. And that, my friends, is how you make your app stop responding. Is how you uh, get ready to embark in a detailed fashion. Obviously, I'm not the most talented individual at that, but that's the process, which is what I wanted to show. And uh, the quick embark is basically just a, a set of dwarves probably not that dissimilar from what I ended up with because that's what I normally do is just uh, play now, embark now without without the preparation. So here we are. We've arrived. We're ready. Strike the earth, waiting for the first caravan, etc. Okay, now I save the game and end the tutorial. So thanks so much for watching. I hope you got a little bit of uh, knowledge and enjoyment out of that. Take good care of yourselves, and I'll see you next time.